Tonight we report on positive news to begin the year for the Moses Lake Ambulance Service and Big Bend holds an active shooter drill Wednesday afternoon. What's happening in sports, Bob? Thanks, Alan. Big Bend baseball splits with Blue Mountain and the Lady Vikings get a win at Wenatchee. Let's take a peek at our weather center forecast. And as we take a look outside our weather center window, we're looking forward to a stretch of very nice days. Really, very nice. All the details coming on up. I'm Alan Troop, and we have all this and much more on iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. The Moses Lake Ambulance Service made enough money in the first three months of 2015 to avoid creating any more debt. The ambulance service made roughly $185,000 more in 2015 compared to the same time period last year. Finance Director Robert Taylor said the service has a net income of about $49,000 and that the financial situation is looking better than it has in a long time. City officials reported on the ambulance service budget during the last city council meeting. The report compared the first three months of 2015 to the first three months of 2014. In the past, the ambulance service's finance sparked council members to discuss stopping the service, raising utility fees, or adding a property tax levy to pay for the service. The Soap Lake City Council approved an ordinance Wednesday night to allow all-terrain vehicles on city streets. Reporter Jeff Chu has the details. People in Soap Lake will be allowed to ride all-terrain vehicles and golf carts on city streets starting sometime in May after a new ordinance is published. Soap Lake City Council on Wednesday night voted 5-1 to one in favor of an ordinance to allow alternative vehicles on city streets. Councilman Robert Brown, who wanted more time to consider and discuss the ordinance, voted against it. Councilwoman Joanne Rushton was absent. Soap Lake joins Afreda in allowing such vehicles on city streets, and its ordinance is modeled after the city of Afreda's alternative vehicle law. The Soap Lake Council passed the ordinance with a so-called sunset clause that would allow council members to reconsider the ordinance in a year. At that time, the council could again approve or reject the ordinance. The council also added a clause to the ordinance to require whip flags on the vehicles to increase their visibility. Soap Lake's ordinance allows vehicles to cross State Route 17 or Daisy Street at the intersections with Main Avenue and 2nd Avenue Northeast. State law only allows such vehicles to cross highways. The Soap Lake ordinance requires alternative vehicle drivers to wear helmets and have proper lights and signals. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. Grant County told the state the fairgrounds will be connected to the Moses Lake sewer system. Fairgrounds manager Jerry Gingrich and Commissioner Carol Ann Swartz said the county told the State Department of Health the county plans to connect to the city sewer system. State officials are requiring the county to change how it handles waste at the fairgrounds. They claim the septic systems at the fairgrounds were affecting the groundwater in the area. County officials and engineers from Gray and Osborne are working with the state on a plan to connect the fairground to the city sewer system by 2016. The project is expected to cost between $1.2 million and $1.5 million to finish. Gingrich said he doesn't expect the project to start until after the fair and before the spring. Grant County Superior Court Judge Evan Spurline is ending his nearly 32-year-long career as a judge in August. Spurline is 65 years old and announced on Wednesday he planned to retire on August 31st. Governor Jay Inslee will be responsible for appointing a replacement until the 2016 election. Any attorney in good standing is eligible for the position. The judge is paid more than $156,000 each year. Spurline is presently the longest tenured judge serving in the Washington court system. Since he started, state law has dramatically changed, he stated. The judge stated he is grateful for his colleagues across the state 
the other Grant County judges, court commissioners, county clerks, court staff, law enforcement officers, county commissioners, and jurors he has served. And now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grant County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. Short break. We'll be back after this. At Moses Lake Community Health Center, we have had the privilege to serve the local community since 1978. What I like about working at this clinic more than any other clinic that I've worked at is the patient care. With the patient care team that we've assembled, it allows us to take care of these many facets of the patient and their family's needs. Please take the opportunity to experience the high quality care provided at our clinics. when I thought the blizzard couldn't get any better. DQ put the blizzard inside a waffle cone. This is mind blowing. So when DQ asked me how I would tell the world, I said. <laughs> Sounds better in Italian. Pretty impressive, Liz. Any blizzard like confetti cake, now in a fresh baked waffle cone. This is fan food, not fast food. Well, hi there, everybody. Hope you enjoyed your Thursday. Meteorologist Don Morelli with you on this very nice evening we're settling into here on iFiber Channel 1 News. Our weather, of course, brought to you by Bud Cleary Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. And as far as Mother Nature's concerned, it's looking very nice for the next couple of days. We do have a wee cool front coming on across tomorrow afternoon and evening. It might kick the winds up a little bit, especially the Western High Basin area, but generally looking very nice. And maybe a few degrees cooler for Saturday. Warming quickly though, back up in fact 80 early next week, specifically Tuesday, but wouldn't be surprised Monday and Wednesday as well. So a great stretch of springtime weather ahead. Speaking of which, what a great day today, wasn't it? 67 degrees, it was a little chilly this morning when we hit freezing. Yes, a little chill in the air this morning, but we responded nicely, 67 for the afternoon high here in Ephrater. And in Moses Lake, we topped out at 68 after a little chillier start, 29 degrees, so a little frost out there in some areas. We're looking at not as cold a morning tomorrow morning, but still a little chilly. And then uh, temperatures will bounce back into the 70s, it looks like. 65 for the current temperature. Again, a very pleasant evening out there, the dew point 29. That's why we think we're going to still see a little chilly start, seasonal start, we'll call it, in the mid-30s. Uh, most areas here in the freighter may be around 40. Looking at the outlook now for the clouds and precipitation the next 72 hours. Here we are at 6 o'clock and I want to point out a few things. First off, the lack of moisture. Even though a weak cool front is coming on across, you can hardly even pick it on out. Uh, you can sort of see it in British Columbia and Canada, but the tail end of this frontal boundary moving across, no moisture at all. What the second thing I want to point out is later in the period, we're looking at quite an upper storm system in the Gulf of Alaska. The main energy by midweek next week looks like it's going to slide just west and south of us, keeping us dry. Uh, but for the most part, who's complaining? It looks very, very nice. In fact, look at the state forecast. Lots of suns out there. Let me get out of the way, in fact. And in fact, just to let you enjoy the sun here in the basin, we're looking for mid-70s. Again, not too bad of an afternoon. As I mentioned, we could see a little gusty afternoon, especially the western areas of the basin, into the overnight hours as we start Saturday morning. Speaking of which, the morning hours, as I mentioned, a little chill tomorrow morning, but then thereafter, look at those mornings. Very nice, in fact, look at those afternoons. Very nice. So again, all we have to contend with is a little bit of a breeze tomorrow afternoon, and then stretch of weather. Looks very nice into midweek next week. Look at this, 78 Monday, near 80, if not in the 80s, on Tuesday. Ooh, does that look good? I have some great plans for the weekend. I hope you do too. Hi. Hi. I see here on my glasses that it's your sales event. Yeah, we have low APR financing and some great lease offers. Check out the bold new Camry. Wow, that's really nice. I gotta get a closer look. Wow, there's so much stuff. Careful. If I could just see where I was going. 
Right now, you can lease a new 2015 Camry for $199 a month with $750 lease bonus cash. Plus, every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan. Now this is cool. That's easy to see. Toyota, let's go places. Baseball hosted Blue Mountain doubleheader action Wednesday. The Vikings were looking to take both games and get back in the thick of the postseason race. That didn't happen, but the team managed to split and still remains in the hunt. Big Ben took the opener 17 to 7. RBI singles by Kyle Killian and Ryan Grenning and a three-run double by Scott Miller put the Vikings up top 5-1 in the first. Big Ben added three in the second and seven in the fourth to blow the contest wide open. The Wolves rallied for six runs over the last three innings to make it somewhat respectable. Caleb Price gave up seven runs off 12 hits and seven innings on the bump but still recorded the win. Grenig went two for three at the dish with three RBI. Blue Mountain took the nightcap by a 3-2 score. Rain Letkeman got the start for the Vikings and held the Wolves in check through three innings, allowing just two hits while fanning four batters. Caleb Whitlock came on in relief of Letkeman in the fourth, who was on a pitch count. Whitlock gave up three runs over six innings and was tagged with the loss. Big Ben softball picked up a win at Wenatchee. The Knights took the opening game of the doubleheader 13 to four. Alexis Spence gave up seven runs off eight hits in four innings in the circle and was tagged with a loss. The Lady Vikings bounced back with a 6-4 win in the second contest. Stephanie, Tiffany Shoresman had the hot stick for Big Ben with two hits and three at bats and a three run dinger. Olivia Harrison went the distance for the Lady Vikings to record the win. But Quincy had a rough start to the 2015 season, dropping five of eight non-league matches. But the Jacks open league play with a win and look to make it two in a row against Freda tonight. Reporter Sean Wells had a chance to catch up with star forward Francisco Alejandres to get his take on things. Francisco Alejandres is a star soccer player for the Quincy Jacks. The junior forward helped lead his team to a state championship last year in the 1A division. This year, the Jacks moved up to 2A, but a championship repeat is still on their minds. Francisco likes all the young talent this year's team has to offer. Well, they're motivated. They want, you know, they try harder because they want to be state championships too. And well, we had we lost a lot of seniors, but they were really good. But I hope these guys get along too with us and get a little bit of chemistry and and to see what the team does this year. A change in divisions means a change in conference. Quincy now is in the CWAC conference with familiar foe Freda. Francisco is excited to face off against the Tigers. Freda's always a competitive, you know. They always want to win, and we want to win then, so I think that's probably one, some of the best teams. But we can't really think about, we can't underestimate any other team, so we need to go hard on every team. As a sophomore last season, Francisco set a single-season goal-scoring record for Quincy, netting 42 goals. But he knows this is a new year, and he's ready to prove himself as an MVP player again. I don't really want to think about the past. I want to kind of think about the future and see how things work out. Whatever happened about being state championships, you know, it's behind. So we need to look forward to doing something better. Five Five One News, Sean Wells. We'll be right back after this. Hello, my name is Cheryl Kono. I am your local Efreda Farmers Insurance Agent. Here at Cheryl Kono Insurance Agency, our customers always come first. We don't just work here, we live here. Please stop by the office, call, email, or Facebook me for a free auto, home, life, business, or farm and ranch quote today. We are insurance, we are farmers. Come in for a free quote today. 
We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Well, one thing I knew from being a patient myself was that a dental office is a scary place to come to. And so we wanted everything possible to make sure that our office is a comfortable place for our patients to visit. The patients that I have, my clients, have made me a part of this community and we want to give back in every way possible. Our spotlight story tonight is about the annual job and career fair at Big Bend Community College, where hundreds of students had a chance to connect with local employers. Reporter Jeff Chu has the story. You want to start your education? Hundreds of college students swarm Big Bend Community College's Advanced Technology Education Center Thursday looking for jobs. The annual job and career fair is a partnership between the college, Moses Lake WorkSource, Washington State Employment Security, SkillSource, Grant County Economic Development Council, and Adams County Development Council. The event provides a central location for job seekers to meet employers and a place for visitors to learn about career opportunities. Clyde Rasmussen, Dean of Professional Technical Education at Big Bend Community College, said the job and career fair has grown. It's been going a number of years. It's uh, started out very small. It used to have it over the gymnasium and it's grown so large. And now we have about 70 exhibitors that come in, people looking for to hire new employees. Most all the employers from the Columbia Basin area and Grant County, Adams County come up here and that are looking for employees. And... Agriculture industry companies were well represented at the job fair. Janet Brown, human resources manager with Washington Tractor, said the company was looking to recruit new employees. We are out looking for service technicians, parts people, sales individuals, um, and managers. We're always in the need for, to fill positions. Terry Pyle, local recruiter representing CHS, talked about the company. Well, CHS is the country's largest ag cooperative. We help the farmers all the way from seed, fertilizer, chemical, uh, petroleum products, all the way through risk management. We help them uh, contract and sell their grains and, and other products. Linda Schmidt, Human Resources Director with National Frozen Foods in Moses Lake, said the company's workforce ranges from 80 employees year-round to about 300 at peak season. We're really looking to get our seasonal labor going. We hire general labor, we hire in the plant as well as the field. So the field is driving combines, we need truck drivers. Our plant work is heavy labor and light labor. Um, maybe working in the tote room, driving forklift, inspection line. We have sanitation, we have QA, so all different sorts of things that we staff up for. Linda McCurdy, human resources representative with REC Silicon, which has about 450 employees in Moses Lake, said the company that produces silicon material used by the solar power industry is recruiting. We're looking for a multitude of different types of people. We're looking for people in our maintenance department. We've got some engineering positions. We've got some uh, internship positions. We've got some chemical operators. I'm looking for quite a few chemical operators, in fact. I'm Jeff Chu for i Fiber One News. We'll be right back after this. Have you been to iFiber1.com? The most up-to-date news in the Columbia Basin is just one click away. With news, sports, and weather, you can stay in the know with what's going on in your community. Read your news on the go by visiting iFiber1.com on your tablet or even your phone. Follow us on Facebook for quick updates and discuss the news with others in our area. Your number one news source in the Columbia Basin is iFiber1.com. Check it out today. What's white and yellow and red all over? If you said the local book telephone directory, the one with the purple sunset on the cover, then you're right. In print and online at statewidewhyp.com, it features up-to-date local maps, community information, and a calendar of events. With a restaurant dining guide with full local menus and a reverse directory, you're sure to find the number you're looking for. It's the best way to get the information you need. Pick up a copy of the local book today or visit statewidewyp.com. Welcome back. 
A judge dismissed charges of arson and burglary against two Quincy men in connection to a fire in George in 2013. Judge Evan Spurline ruled prosecutors didn't have enough proof that Jose Segundo Tapia, a 22-year-old man, and Gustavo Tapia, a 20-year-old man, were inside the building before the fire started. The men were charged last year with arson, burglary, nine counts of theft of a firearm, and theft. The men were accused of breaking into a building in the 200 block of Royal Ann Avenue in January 2013. Investigators believe the men broke into a commercial office and an apartment, stole guns, and used paper towels to set several fires throughout the building. The prosecutor's office was disappointed for the victims since the firearms stolen from the residents weren't recovered. Big Bend Community College and emergency personnel from across Grant County came together yesterday for an active shooter simulation on campus. Reporter Joe Utter was there and has the story. How many suspects are involved? Um, there was just one guy. Just one guy with the gun. Just one guy, okay. Everybody down! It was only a drill, but it was as real as it could get at Big Bend Community College Wednesday afternoon. The school held an active shooter training complete with students and staff playing the role of victims and the shooter. Kyle Foreman, the college's director of campus safety and security, explains a scenario that was set up. Our simulated shooter is the estranged boyfriend of one of the nursing students here in the building, and he came to college today with a gun uh, to cause her harm. Along the way, he shot two students and uh, engaged law enforcement in the end, and law enforcement had to stopped the subject and he was pronounced dead at the scene. Of course, this is all an exercise, but uh, it tests all the different levels of the response for the community and also the college. Foreman said the drill included agencies from across Grant County and was the largest drill the school has held. This one is a larger scale exercise, involves not only law enforcement, but fire and EMS, the Port of Moses Lake, the coroner's office. We also asked Grant County Mental Health and New Hope Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Services to assist us with this incident. The drill helps not only the college, but emergency personnel be better prepared in the case of an actual large-scale emergency. From notifying students and staff to securing the campus and post-incident counseling. Well, the college decided to hold an active shooter drill uh, to better prepare for large-scale emergencies that could be an active shooter or other forms of targeted violence which happen on the campus. We've been practicing and preparing for this exercise for about two years. We developed a written plan for emergency response on campus. We exercised that plan two years ago with law enforcement, found gaps in that plan, refined the plan, and now we're testing the plan today to find out how well it worked. We set up a camera inside the room where the shooter, Big Ben student Luke Roseman, barricaded himself with other volunteers before he was taken out by the Moses Lake Tactical Response Team, who moved in quickly. Yeah, they were, they were quick on their feet, they were pretty fast, so they took caught me on a surprise, so it was pretty good. College officials and law enforcement agreed the training exercise went smoothly. The school is hoping to run another drill on campus next year. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. Golfers are scrambling at the Moses Point Golf Course on May 8th. Registration is open for the 15th annual Moses Lake Chamber of Commerce Golf Scramble at 9.30 a.m. with the shotgun start scheduled for 11 a.m. Teams of four will compete for the lowest score and also in a variety of contests including men's and women's longest drive, longest putt, and a hole-in-one contest. Registration is $125 per person or $500 per team and includes cart rental, lunch, and two drink tickets. The chamber is also accepting sponsorship registrations. Registration forms are available on the chamber's website at www.moseslake.com. And that's going to do it for us here at I-501 News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.